welcome. This week's is Irrational Man, which is just not a good movie. My impression going into Woody Allen movies was I knew he wasn't a good person, but like people seem to like his movies. And so far, of like the two or three I've seen, they've all been mid at best, and this one is just bad. For a lot of reasons, but really a lot of the same reasons. The first one is that I just don't understand why anyone finds a Lucas attractive beyond the he's mysterious and interesting. And I'm like, yeah, that's a reason, but it's like, I don't think that's not a good enough reason for some guy who in the beginning of the movie is just like waxing about poetically or about philosophy for the entire time. Like I can't imagine having a conversation with him because I would just feel either being talked down to or just like I'm talking to a brick wall who just is like, oh, Kierkegaard can't, you know, they say this about life. There's really no meaning to it. Blah, 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 blah. He's just like yada yada yadaing everything, and I'm just like, what do you what do you see in this man? What is it attractive about him? And the only reason I could really find was just that it's like he's fascinating and interesting, or he's fascinating and vulnerable, but he's just so boring. It's like, why did you find this man attractive when all he does is just like, huh? Because the first, like, half of the movie, before he's like, I'm going to go murder a man. And that changes his whole life view. I think he sighs before, like, literally every line. He's just like, huh, life is meaningless. And it's like, I, what, I just don't, I just don't like it. It's just kind of weird. I don't really understand how anyone in the movie just, like, lets him exist. Because even, my bigger problem is that when he's like, oh, I'm going to kill the justice guy because he's evil and that makes it okay, that he just does an entire 180 on his personality. Like, he's just, like, those gloomy, just, like, nothing person. And then he's like, yeah, let's go. Like, let's take on life. Ready to take on the day. And no one is like, hey, what's up? They're just like, yeah, it's fine, you know? No big deal. We're just chilling. It was a little weird, he was acting a little different, but you know, I liked that he was finally feeling happy about life. Whereas to me, it's like, if someone was just did 180 on their personality in a night, I'd be like, either what drugs are you on, or like, what happened to you? And he never really elaborates. Like, he never, like, is forced to elaborate why he's feeling the things, and if he does, it's just misinterpreted as like, aha, Abe, classic Abe. It's just, like, what, like, I don't understand. And even, like, Rita and Jill, is they're just, like, immediately, you're like, yes, I want to be with you. But Jill, at least, like, by the end, has, like, the sense to be like, oh, yeah, you're a murderer. I can't be with that. But Rita's just so down bad that she's like, I just simply don't care. Like, I would run away with him even if I knew he was a murderer. And it's like, what? Uh... Excuse me? I just have no words for that. Like, why? Why do you... Why? Uh, that's just, like, a level of human thought that I just simply don't understand. Like, I know she wants to have an affair and just, like, get out of her marriage with her husband. But it's just, like, you're so allured to that idea that you would be willing to go off with a murderer even though you know he's a murderer and I just don't understand that because Abe is just a walk he's just a walking red flag like he literally plays Russian roulette in front of like a bunch of college kids at a party and Jill and Jill isn't like oh you're you need to see a therapist because he's like oh therapists don't work like that doesn't matter you still should check that man into an institution, but he just tried to kill himself in front of you. So what if it's a chance? He still did it, and then did it again. He literally 50 50 did it in front of, like, eight people. And I was like, like, what? It's just... This is a movie of just huffing the copium as hard as you can to pretend that nothing is wrong with this man. 
because there is just so much wrong with him and everyone is just like yeah you know it's just classic Abe it's just you know nothing's wrong here like and they're just willing to just lose it all they're like yep I just want to be with you even though you're just a murderer or you're just a dicey person and I just I don't understand like how any of it works I don't understand like what we're supposed to find interesting about Abe Lucas he's just so dull and then he's a murderer and you're like am I supposed to be interested in that because I'm just like oh you're an awful person I already thought you were a boring person but now you're an awful person because you're just trying to murder someone and like copium justify it like this is death note or something but it also is just weird because the movie seems to kind of like see what he's doing as good albeit kind of indirectly because there's like two tracks in this entire score and they're just like peppy jazz music and it's like like it's playing one of the times it's playing is like he's getting the poison to go kill the justice and it's like Brandon and it's like his happy jazz music and I'm like what that doesn't work tonally at all he is getting ready to commit a murder and you're just like da -da 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 -da. there's like having a happy time like we're going to a walk in the park with like the love of your life and it's just happened it happens so many times for the second part it's just like this entire tonally inconsistent like piece it's just like why why are you playing happy music for a man who is murdering someone or attempting to do that like I don't understand the logic behind that because it's like oh well, he didn't have enough money but like from what I understand Woody Allen is like a pretty famous film director like he can get the money for three more tracks in his score to have a little bit of a sinister thing for a guy who's trying to kill someone like that's not really an excuse but I just don't understand this movie and I don't like it because it just doesn't make any sense and everything is just at odds with itself or just lacks any sense or is just beaten on the head because my other biggest problem with this is that no one is allowed to emote things like Joaquin Phoenix and Emma Stone are like they're trying they're trying to do their best but it's like everything they need to do or like show emotion with is just being told like I like they're literally like I I feel this I think this or it's like just overtly saying like how they're feeling instead of like letting me see that for myself like there's ones like my thoughts are very mixed up and troubled it's like why can you not show that like sometimes you can say like, you can like talk and show talk and not show but it's like every instance of it it's like talk without show it's even like early in it when she when Jill's kind of like just starting in it she's like am I blushing right now it's like I have eyes that work if you're blushing right now i can i can see that emma stone is a good actress she can convey that without you needing to write it into the dialogue joaquin phoenix is a good actor you can convey his emotions without needing him to say it and i just don't it's just that's just annoying to me because i know that both of these that the two leads are good actors and actresses like outside of this but they're just like not given any room to like show that or if they are showing it it's just like undercut by it being told to me and I'm just don't don't like that personally I'd rather it just be shown to me and then instead of I feel sad or he looks disturbed and troubled it's like I don't why are you telling me that just let me let me look with my eyes they still work the murder itself we're just going to entirely change topics cuz this murder this movie does murder its characters by just not letting them do anything that was a transition right there the actual like 
killing of the justice guy is just not that good it's just so like bland because he literally just goes up like mixes the drink sits down next to the guy the guy turns away he swaps the cups walks away murder done and it's like that's all like this guy's huge like passionate desire to like get rid of this evil on society and all he just does is swap the cups and walk away and then later, when someone else gets framed for it, he's like, oh, I didn't think of that. And it's like, yeah, but he's like, yeah, I also did think of that. Like, he's just fully just lying the entire time. And he's like, well, I killed now, but I'm justified in that. That's okay. But someone else can take the fall for it, even though I didn't do anything wrong, because I don't want to go to jail. I'm finally feeling free. And it's like, that's not a justification. But again, there's the happy music that's like, da 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 And it's like, oh, it's fine that he's doing this. And it's like, it's really not fine that you're going to frame an innocent man because you're finally feeling happy about your life like those are not things that equate and then he just tries to kill Jill it's like what he's like well you know I'll just lie and then I just don't want to go to jail so we're just going to kill the only person who knows the truth and it's like oh okay you're just a psychopath like that is not nothing to be happy about and then he just dies to a flashlight and falls down and dies. And then Joe's like, that was a really traumatic day, but now I'm getting better. But, it, you know, it was a lesson. And it was like, what was the lesson here? Like, think critically about people you engage with. Don't date a murderer. Like, I don't feel like there was a good message. Because I don't think the film ever really was condemning... Joaquin or Abe Lucas's actions beyond like Jill being like you know murder is bad because the music is never like showing him doing anything as like sinister like we're never really given any like this is bad beyond just the murder is bad and then Abe Lucas huffing the copium to be like it's actually not bad because he was a bad person and, like those things do not equate and I just don't, I just don't like it. Don't like it. Not at all. Another thing I don't like is Rita, who is just not, she's just, she's just too down bad for me. Because she, she's the one who like initially kind of was like, oh, here is a murderer and like gives her a crackpot theory, but it's really not a crackpot theory. It's just like the truth. And then she's like, yeah, I don't care. And it's like, do you really want an affair that badly that you're just like, he's a murderer, that's fine. But like, even before the movie starts, beyond her like first interaction at the school, she just immediately comes to Abe Lucas's house and is like, we're having an affair, like you're going to sleep with me, okay? And it's like, what? How is that? How does that work? And I don't really understand how that works and I just it just makes me uncomfortable and it's just weird and I'm not a fan but really just neither of the relationships either Rita's or Jill's are just I just don't understand them at all Jill is just like she's just huffing the copium and she only really like finds out about Rita's theory from just some random character who I don't think we ever see before and then comes up like three times as she's just like horseback riding with. It's like, where did this character come from? Who Who is this person? Why are they relevant? And they really just like aren't. It's just like some girl that Jill knows who she goes horseback riding with that she can just like talk plot with. And I'm like, well, what? It's just strange. It's just a strange decision. And then when like she actually Jill actually knows that it's like murder she's just like I can't do it I love you too much to be like you're a murderer which is definitely like that's something probably, probably happens in real life but she just does not think critically about it and is even like oh I'm I felt bad I was having second thoughts or it was like I forget what it was I have it in my notes there's a point there was a line where it was just like oh, 
I feel like it's bad for doubting him. And it's like, why do you feel bad for like thinking critically about your relationship with a guy who is clearly not mentally well and just shows no sign of going to get help for it, even though he really probably should. And it's like, I don't, I just don't understand why, what you see in him, really, beyond, like, he's dark and mysterious. Which, like, you know, that's fine to an extent, but then he literally tries to kill himself multiple times in, like, succession. And it's like, go get him a therapist. Divorce him into therapy. If he loves you, he'll go to a therapist. And I just don't. I just don't understand. No one no one questions Abe. And I don't know why. He's just... A, he's a walking red flag. So many times. And no one is like... Well, that's a problem. We should go maybe check him into a therapist. Because it's only justifications. You're like, they don't work for me. And it's like, I don't care. It's better than like finding your meaning in murdering someone. Like that's not any better than just throwing you at a therapist and hoping they can like remotely help you. I just don't understand. He just does a 180 and no one is like, no one's like, oh, the sudden change of your personality is a little suspicious. What's going on here? No acknowledgement he's going to kill someone like, it just doesn't, nothing in this movie connects with each other, at least in my mind, like, nothing any character does connects with, like, the main plot or the relationships of the movie, or it, like, it does literally, like, in the film, but I'm, like, I don't understand how we got from A to B or how these two characters work, but maybe it's just I have a brain that functions fairly critically and I'm like oh and I also can see inside Abe's thoughts where I go oh this man is crazy and needs to be see the therapist or go to an institution because he literally is happy about committing a murder and shows no signs of changing that attitude by the end of the film like he will kill again he's gonna death note this but without the death note He's just, like, huffing the copium that he's killing bad people, so it's fine. And it's like, it's really not, it's really not okay that you're doing that. You should probably stop. But he doesn't. If he didn't fall down the elevator, he would have just kept, he would have had two people he killed. And then it would just keep going and going and going and going. And it's like, oh, this is just, like, just not good. I just don't like this movie. That's really all it is, is I just don't... I don't enjoy it. My last point, which is connected to, like, every other point, is he gets framed and is, like... He's like, yeah, I'm gonna go keep murdering. But if, did he ever just not... Con did he just not consider, like, oh... I would have to deal with someone else being like, oh, you got framed and have to deal with, like, the consequences of your actions. And I honestly, like... I think he does, but it's like, did that not cross your head for like two seconds? Where you're like, you know, maybe someone innocent will go in here. What's the ethical consequences, ethical moral consequences of that? And he just went, not my problem. I'm happy now. It doesn't matter to me. But it's like, well, there could just be like every person just keeps wrapping around. Like, if he killed Jill, which he doesn't, but theoretically, if he did, someone else could take the fall for that. Da, 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 and then the, the affected people that are in jail or have been caught because of his actions and are just completely innocent just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I fail to see how this guy who was musing full of, like philosophy for the first half of the movie would be able to justify that to himself but I guess he's happy now you know he finally has meaning in his life murdering people and that's enough for him to keep going which it just really is not like at all that's not a good reason nothing in this movie is a good reason for why any of it happens i don't know why it exists i don't like it 
Emma Stone and Joaquin Phoenix, they try, but they are given nothing to work with. And that really upsets me. But apparently we have another Woody Allen film somewhere eventually in this lineup. And I'm not looking forward to that at all. But that's all I really have to say about Irrational Man. I don't really know how to spell this movie, so if I mess up the title, that's my bad. But I, it took me like four tries to spell this into the letterbox to log it. And you can follow me on Letterbox at Hagita, and that is where you can see what movie I'm watching next. Or just the order of these episodes, because I usually log it before I record the episode to give myself a little space to put my thoughts down or just make a meme. Because sometimes all I can do is cope with it, where it's just making a funny joke. But that's all for this episode. I haven't decided which movie will come next, because I'm running out of ones that are on streaming services I have. So we're just going to kind of figure it out as we go.